Hi everyone, my name's Elizabeth and I'm a marine biologist. I run this marine biology themed YouTube channel sharing all about marine biologists and the amazing wonders of the marine world. And in today's video, I'm going to be answering one of the questions I get most in the comments of these videos. I also love to answer all of the questions and comments that you put below. So please, if you want to ask questions, chuck them down below of any of my videos. Today I want to answer the question that I get asked, which is, should I become a marine biologist? Now there's a lot of things that go into this decision, which we can't all cover in today's video. Things like locations and jobs and money and all of those different things. But in today's video, I'm going to be providing you with five activities that you can go out and do and kind of get a feel for what marine biology is and is this something I'm going to like. And then make sure to click the like button and the subscribe button down below and I'll make future videos on covering other aspects of answering the all important big question, should I become a marine biologist? So let's get on with it. To become a marine biologist, one must wear a snorkel mask at all times, whilst reading books, whilst drinking tea. Side note, turns out, can't actually drink tea with a snorkel mask on, and that was a fake sip, could you tell, of course. And pondering life's biggest questions. Only when we are truly at one with the snorkel mask can we swim in the hallowed waters of the marine biology job pool. I am, of course, joking, but I wanted to put that in there to kind of give you a don't try tip to start off with, which doesn't count as the five. This is just an extra bonus add-on. I don't want to recommend scuba diving to you. Now, I know that goes against what you would normally think. You would think, go scuba diving, that's the main part of marine biology. Well, it isn't. And actually, as a marine biology career, there are very few opportunities that you can get to go scuba diving. There's a lot of health and safety involved. And as you kind of get into it being a professional career, you need to be really highly trained in scuba diving to be able to go and scuba dive on different things. So unless that's something that you are unbelievably passionate about and something that you really, really want to commit to, Actually, spending money and spending time getting into scuba diving isn't necessary at all for the marine biology career. And it's also something that you often get a lot of opportunities to do at university if you decide to go that route to get into marine biology. And there's a lot of resources and support doing that way, going to do it at undergrad and doing it later on. So I would recommend not putting your energy into scuba diving and putting your energy into some other things which we'll get onto now. So this isn't the typical YouTuber desk setup, which all looks fancy and lovely and nice and neat. This is the reality of a marine biologist working from home. And actually a lot of the job is spent at a desk. Now I've got things for notes and um, plans. I've got identification books, books and stats, diaries, and this is because a lot of your work as a marine biologist, no matter what kind of field you go into, will be based around research. So my first suggestion is either go online or get hold of a book. Um, I have a lot of videos on great marine books. And this one in particular is one that I think kind of sums up a lot of the what you would find in a marine biology undergrad. Not all of it, but some of it. And what we're going to do is we're going to look at all the different aspects of there. And I recommend going away and researching it. So this is what I mean about research. This is the Marine World book. And you open it up and just keep looking, start just looking through it. And you're, it will start off with maybe some of the stuff that you would usually skip over. Things like um, well, satellites and the environment and you might just skip straight to like the nice cool species but actually take a second to look and this talks about the currents and everything we learn about this during our undergraduate and these are talking about light and how important this is because this affects everything in the sea so looking through and learning about these sort of things salinity that's how salty the sea is very important can actually influence kind of the there's different layers in the sea with the deep ocean and different salinities 
Again, density and viscosity, water pressure. All of these are different things. Dissolved gases, ocean acidification, sea temperatures, and that's ocean currents. And that's before we even tides, before we even get onto things like um, the biology aspect of it, which is all of the food webs, and then looking down and the ways that species communicate, things like bioluminescence. Marine biology is one of the most varied careers you could ever do. You can study ice, you know, ice, deep sea, different habitats, different species, different things. So there's always gonna be something I reckon that everyone would love to study. And just by going away and picking a topic, say algae, actually there's a fantastic talk coming up very soon about diatoms which is what this page is which i've got coming up on the channel which is really exciting and um so that was a handy uh handy open and going away and researching some of these things and seeing if it interests you or just researching how varied it is because i even went into marine biology thinking i'd like one thing and actually i came out loving something completely different because there's just so much awesome things to tick so many boxes for different people so if you go away and just research the sheer vastness of it i'm sure you'll find something that you'll love and that will hopefully help you um decide if that's something you want to do because really the world is a oyster boom marine pun in there haha so the next tip i want to give you is to go out and have a marine adventure as a marine biologist a lot of the time you have to go on long field days long field trips long days outside if you're doing it for research and for your job it doesn't matter what the weather is unless it's at the point at which it's dangerous to do so you're out in the field so i would suggest picking a day any day and getting up in the morning or you can either get up early and just set off go explore along the coast go i don't know go out on a day trip somewhere do whatever you feel you want to do that's connected to the sea take waterproofs take food take everything you will need for the day and it will kind of show you what it is like to do a lot of field work sometimes it's really you then have to do that for, you know three months straight no matter what the weather is again unless it's dangerous but it gives you an idea that long time spent outside doing physical field work is potentially part of the job now i want to quickly preface in here that talking about doing physical work isn't accessible to everyone and i'm speaking as someone who is not disabled and I don't want anyone watching this that isn't able to do some of the physical work that may be required in a marine biology career to be put off by this at all. There are There is so much you can do in marine biology that ranges from working with incredible data sets to working in fantastic lab work to doing research trips that are more accessible. It shouldn't put an end to your want to be a marine biologist. And by suggesting you go out and do a day full of physicalness, I don't want that to put anyone off. I'm putting that in there because it is the reality for people that want to do physical field work. But I also know plenty of people that don't want to go outside at all. I would rather sit and look at some fantastic data that are coming in from like amazing electronic tags, like looking at how turtles are moving around the world and things like that, than they would be out in the cold in the UK. So this section of the video is easily replaced by a bit of extra research. And as I talk about the other tips going on, it's still something that you can definitely take part in. So I just wanted to clarify that and please, do not be put off. And while we're out on this day doing a research activity, or potentially you could do this by watching my videos or Googling um, and researching some awesome things online, I want you to be observant. I want you to be taking a notebook with you, taking notes. What do you see? What do you find? And uh, I'm just gonna grab my book. <laughs> Maybe take a marine identification book with you and give yourself a challenge. Say, I'm gonna identify as best as I can, even if it's just things like saying that's a crab or that's a shrimp, don't going down to species if you don't know them. But if you can wanna set yourself a challenge, 
you know, go and try and do something like that. Identify everything on a rock. Identify everything in a, in, you know, as far as you can reach with your arm in a certain spot. And that is kind of what marine biologists do. On a field trip out, you will most likely be doing the same thing, like identifying everything in a rock pool, but about 20 times for about three months. And so doing something like that, being observant, taking notes, setting yourself that challenge and being disciplined enough to finish it is a lot to do with marine biology and kind of having that mini experience will kind of let you see um, what it's like. I find it great. I absolutely love the tedious loveliness of all the identification. Not to say it's not difficult sometimes, but it's just something that I, I really like. And when you come to do a career, you'll both be doing that kind of work in, outside in field work, but also a lot of that is done in the lab, sitting at microscopes. In fact, I would say 20% of it is done in the field, 80% of it is done in labs, identifying all these things. So the more you can get into that habit of it, the, the you know, the more prepared you'll be. So after you've been out on your amazing adventure and you get back, you're gonna have to try and do something that a lot of marine biologists, a lot of scientists spend a lot, I spend a lot of time sitting here and writing about the science. I can even, I can even touch type now. I do it so much. Ish. <laughs> so the next tip is get used to writing. This isn't something I'm saying you need to be great at writing before going to become a marine biologist. No. Wherever you're going, whatever career you get into, whatever, say you go do an undergraduate, the job there is to help you improve, to help you get better at writing. But what you need to do is kind of get used to the idea of it. Once you've gone and done something amazing, come back and think about writing that up. How can we make it sound? Um, how can we get all the information that we've learned onto the page so that others can learn from it? It doesn't have to be scientific or the scientific writing style if you're not a marine biologist yet but go away and write it up even for yourself or write it as a blog post share it with other people get in touch with other scientists like me and we can share it on our websites and things like that share your experiences of the science um, if you want to or you can just keep it for yourself almost like a diary you can also enter scientific writing competitions i've been a judge on this competition which i'm going to pop up here um, which is helping um, children and um, young adults do scientific writing where we will look and give you feedback and, and judge a scientific report that people do which is just a great way to get some practice in and get used to it but whatever you can do to sit down and get used to writing and if you absolutely hate it and you don't want to do writing then Maybe a scientific career isn't the best option for you, though writing is in a lot of careers. But if you don't mind it or can at least put up with it, then definitely don't keep that as a barrier. Um, it's just something that you should get used to and factor in, in considering there is a lot of time sat here typing away. The next one I find particularly exciting because, I don't know, I feel like this is something that has changed within my course of career in the last five or six or seven i don't want to do the maths years um that social media has become a thing when i was looking to become a marine biologist when i was looking to go to university the first time i ever met a marine biologist was at an open day at a university it was the first time i ever heard a marine biologist speak or interacted with them that's that might not be the case anymore. Social media has some great, amazing scientists and marine biologists out there, and they're telling people about their daily lives, about the struggles, about the positives. You can get a really good idea of what the career is like by following someone on social media. You can also reach out to people. I mean, don't ever get annoyed if that person doesn't get back to you. Sometimes people are very busy and that's not why they're on social media, but if that person, and again me, you can comment below and, and get in touch with me and as best as we all can, we, I would hope, most scientists would love to provide a bit of advice and tell you what it's like because 
it would be something that would have been so amazing to me as a kid and as always wanted to be a marine biologist but having that ability to immediately get in touch with someone that's doing exactly what I want to do and hearing from them is actually, um, it's, it could be life changing. So don't ever be scared to put yourself out there. The worst that's gonna happen is they're not gonna reply and you're not gonna be in any worse of a situation. And you're also just gonna get some amazing marine content from their social medias. So that is my next uh, tip, trick and advice. And I'm gonna pop on the screen some a very small handful of people that I think would be amazing to follow. There are so many out there. You can head over and follow me at Marine Mum. Ah, oh, Mum. <laughs> Struggling with my own name, Marine Mumbles, and you'll see me retweeting and talking to a lot of people on social medias. That will also be a great indication for people that you should follow. The fifth and final tip is something that I think is incredibly incredibly important and actually it doesn't just help you answer should I become a marine biologist you can actually be involved in marine biology studies in making impact on affecting the data and the world and the science that is around that is well there's literally happening right now in in whatever country you are in but I'm in the UK so I'm going to speak of some examples for here you can do this by getting involved in citizen science. And this is where scientists need help answering questions. And so you'll get training and resources and we'll ask you to go out and please get this information for us so that we can start to deal with some of the issues that are out there. There are great things for kind of everyone. If you've only got a day to, to do something, then maybe take part in something like the big seaweed search. This is done by the Natural History Museum and a load of other partners and they have a list of seaweeds and, a, and some instructions of how to do it and you can go out and identify the seaweeds. You don't need any prior experience because they show you what you need to do in the information that they give you and that's really helping show things like how climate change is affecting rocky shores because we're using seaweeds as kind of that indicator for movement around the country. You can, if seaweeds are not your thing, though I highly recommend you do that because seaweeds are amazing, um, you can get involved with things like Sea Watch. Sea Watch do a national survey week where every year for a week they ask people to go out around the coast and search for marine mammals and they'll provide you with some training and give you some sheets to fill in and you can go and sit on a cliff with a nice sandwich and a cup of coffee and look out and watch for whales. You can actually see my video where I did this and spoiler alert me saw some really cool marine mammals. <laughs> um, so that's fantastic, but you can do that throughout the year and submit the, uh, the surveys. There's also things like sea search, which is, can be a lot more um, involved, which is really great. You can get involved in either shore surveys or dive surveys. They provide days of training if you want it, where you can go and learn how to record. And they have compiled so, so, so much uh, data. Um, and have so much great information. They've even published, oh, let me get them. One second. <laughs> books are never very far away in my house. Um, sea Search have even made entire books based on all of the cr amazing creatures and the distributions and their sizes from the stuff that citizen science has done, from all the people interested in marine biology that are going out and getting this information. How cool is that? Oh, on that, I've just thought of a bonus sixth tip, like genuinely just thought about it, um, to kind of recreate a lot of data entry. So when we go and we notice things, we come back and we write about them, but we also put the data in, analyze them, collect them. Link to that and citizen science is putting what you find out when you go out exploring in the marine world, taking a picture of that and uploading it to sites like the NBN. Um, atlas and this is basically again like a citizen science project but people upload put in where it is and all these different things um, and then send it off instead of me talking about it here I've shown how to do this in another video which I'll link up here but that is a really good way to kind of show the entire process of science and actually the data entry but it can be really helpful and really useful as well so that is my sixth bonus tip so that has been tips to see if you should go into marine biology or if that's the right career choice for you. If you have any questions, 
chuck them down in the comments below and I'll get back to you. I hope this has been really helpful and useful to you. Please like and let me know if the video gets a load of likes and I know to carry on and I'll make more video series about should I become a marine biologist, what's marine biology like, what's it about and um, yeah you'll get as much of that information as I can provide from me in the future and I'll be back here next Wednesday with another video because I've posted a video every single Wednesday for three years and I'm not going anywhere so I'll see you next Wednesday. Bye everyone.